Hello everyone, it's Road Dog Does Politics back with another video. Uh, this week's video I want to ask the question, um, are Remainers still scaremongering? Because I feel like, sort of like two and a bit years later, on from the referendum, both sides, Leave and Remain, are still very entrenched in their beliefs and I, I got the feeling, especially from watching the cons some of the Conservative Party conference this week, there were a few people that, when confronted with, you know, facts, projections, some evidence-based statistics from, you know, institutions like the IMF and the IFS, um, they still get rejected as, oh, well, you're just fear-mongering, you're just trying to scare people, uh, I'd like to see more evidence, and, you know, why are you doing this? You know, it's just silly, you're, you know, putting the cat amongst the pigeons, etc. And, like, what has happened to us whereby we just simply reject what's in front of our faces? Like, I understand... I understand that... You know, as a Remainer myself, as many people will know, I voted Remain. And, you know, I'm not going to deny that, you know, both the Leave and Remain side during the Brexit referendum told lies. You know, blatant lies. You know, that's undeniable. Um, you know, the Remain side did scare manga to a degree by saying, you know, the, you know, the world's going to the economy's going to collapse, the sky's going to fall in, a bit of an exaggeration, but, you know, the, the pound did fall, but, you know, the economy sort of levelled itself out a little bit um, as the months went on. But, you know, nothing insanely terrible happened. But then again, on the leave side, you know, lie after lie was told, you know, the, the big red bus, 350 million for the NHS was a lie. Um, you know, we're going to enter into a land of milk and honey after Brexit. Everything's going to be, you know, brilliant, amazing. We're going to be richer. Um, you know, we're going to lift ourselves up and we're going to like have our sovereignty back and make our own laws. La, la, la. We've heard it all before, right? So, you know, lies told on either side. What I think, though, is that um, it's hard. it's hard for people to their you know put their foot forward and say you know this is this is what I think this is what's going to happen especially you know with with companies like industries especially like the car industry that is like feeling the f like full impact of Brexit and what could possibly happen and you know man manual manual work manual labor workers that um you know, uh, sort of attached to these companies, do the bulk of the work, you know, put, like, machines together, etc, etc. Um, those are the industries that are going to be most, most affected by us leaving the EU, like it or not. And, you know, we've got companies like L Nissan, for example, who are worried about whether or not they should move um, up sticks and move their company and move their manufacturing to the continent. Um and I'll, I'll give you a quote, actually, which sums this up quite well, um, sums up what I'm talking about um, with regard to this constant, oh, you're fear-mongering, oh, I don't want to really listen because you're just, you know, pushing this this constant scaremongering and, oh, I don't want to hear it, it's, everything's going to be great. And, like, well, you don't know that, like, I don't know why you're, re I'm, I'm struggling to understand, like, this, this constant rejection of facts. It's it's very similar across the pond with Donald Trump and what he's doing. But um, he was at, um, I'm not sure where he was actually, he was at some sort of big car sort of marketing event. Um, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote a tweet from James O'Brien. Um, sorry if you don't really like him very much, but there you are. Um, so this was yesterday. This from Nissan Chief Exec Carlos Gosen, I don't know how you say his name, Carlos Gosen, is the result of covering Brexit with utterly bogus balance, balance, 
one epic failure of journalism. So this is what he said, right? According to him. We are preparing for the worst, but I do not want to tell you how we are preparing because you will say I am just trying to scare people. So there we are. I think that sums up where we are with Brexit quite perfectly. Nobody is willing to listen. Um, and if they do listen, they're just going to get rejected by the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg, Boris Johnson, people like Nadine Doris, uh, Isabel Oakeshott, those type of journalists who were like, oh, no, we all know that, you know, we were told, you know, that things, things would be, things would be, you know, you know, 50, it would take 50 years, maybe 20 years and things would gradually get better. Like, he didn't say that in the, in the referendum campaign. He didn't say, oh, it's going to take a little bit of time, but then eventually we'd, you know, be be living at large. Like, you didn't, you didn't say that. You'd say we'd be immediately better off, immediately better off. There was no mention of anybody, you know, um, or the, the no mention of the economy dipping, nothing like that. It was like, no deal Brexit. Like, what a great idea. We're going to be, you know, living like kings, land of milk and honey. It's going to be great. That was what was sold to us. But now you're saying, like, people like Jacob Rees-Mogg is like, oh, well, it will take us a bit of time, maybe, but then, you know, things will get better. That's not what you said before. So, you know, more lies. And I think what's happened is we've got to a point where there's been so many lies told on both sides that when someone does come forward and tries to say something based on evidence, based on fact, based on logic, based on projections, based on real life reality, what's actually going on in the real world where, you know, you got businesses, corporations, companies, um, you know, health institutions that are work like, what should I do? What should we do? Are we going to move continents? Like we're having trouble shipping this from here to there. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I need some sort of confirmation, some clarity that I'm absolutely not getting at the moment because negotiations are still going on. We're still rejecting like, you know, deal after deal after deal from the EU. And it's like, I don't have a clue what's happening. And, you know, they're right to be worried. They're right to be concerned. Because, you know, clock's, tick clock's ticking, guys. Clock's ticking. Um, and uh, so, you know, I was saying, you know, the so many lies being told on both sides that we've got to a point where nobody is believing, nobody can believe a lie or no can tell the difference between a lie and the truth. So uh, that, that's the state of journalism today, guys. That is the, the state of journalism and if I can quickly just read um, a article from The Guardian. I know, Guardian, liberal leftist media. Hey ho. Um, dum, 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 dum. So again, with the, with the Nissan, various different industries, um, the headline is Nissan becomes latest manufacturer to warn against hard Brexit. Um, he said, in a statement to The Guardian, authorised by the main board in Japan, Nissan said, since 1986, the UK has been a production base for Nissan in Europe. Our British-based research and development and design teams support the development of products made in Sunderland, specifically for the European market. Um, friction, frictionless trade has enabled the growth that has seen our Sunderland plant become the biggest factory in the history of the UK car industry, exporting more than half of its production to the EU. Japanese financial institutions have already submitted applications to set up bases in European financial authorities such as Frankfurt and Amsterdam, he said, and some manufacturing companies are holding off future investment plans. If Japanese companies encounter problems in the UK, I would not be surprised if they shift their balance towards their business operations on the continent. Um, Senior executives at Toyota, BMW and the PSA Group, which owns Vauxhall, have all warned this week that they are likely to reduce their operations in the UK in the event of a hard Brexit. In September, Ralph Speth, chief exec of Jaguar Land Rover, warned the Prime Minister that its operations faced grinding to a halt and that tens of thousands of jobs in this industry could be lost. Oh, but fear-mongering. Can't believe that. It's just... It's very, it's very frustrating that we nobody can get anywhere at this point. Like, 
maybe they can say something and be believed. So I think, you know, with Brexit here and also with Trump and, you know, the Kavanaugh tri uh, trial investigation, um, court case in America, where, you know, the word of like a sexually assaulted woman is still being questioned at this point. I mean, obviously that's a different issue, but, you know, where where have we where have we gotten up to that this is now happening that you know actually responsible serious business owners companies institutions are just being rejected as oh fake news oh fear mongering what is wrong with people like just they can't be believed on on face value so it needs to change folks if you like what you see don't forget to comment and subscribe also ring the bell if you want to be notified of videos every time I upload them. Um, I'd love to hear what you've got to say if you've got any sort of questions or anything you want me to upload in the future. Um, so yeah, that's all for now guys. See you later.